welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming one of my favorite videos to film. This is a will I buy it video. Kind of a little bit of an anti-haul too because there are some things I definitely won't be picking up and just so you guys know, quick disclaimer, these are just my opinions. I'm not trying to tell you who you should support, who you should buy from. I'm just telling you guys what I go through, what process I go through when I decide what I'm going to buy because there's some interesting launches coming up as we get into Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and the holiday season. There's Everyone's trying to get your money. Don't be confused. People aren't coming out with makeup launches for you guys or out of the goodness of their heart or because you need another highlighter, okay? Just telling you how it is. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't fall for it. That doesn't mean you don't fall for it. It is just how it is. So just wanted to give you guys that disclaimer. I'm so paranoid that there's lipstick on my teeth, but I did just put lipstick on, so it's still drying down. Anyway, um, is there anything else I want to tell you guys? Thank you for watching this video. Everyone that helps me make this video is going to be linked down in my description box. And um, yeah, let's just get into it, guys. So the first thing on here, this has to be an ad. Like, I feel like Trend Mood definitely must have gotten paid for this, right? Like, that's the thing about Trend Mood, because I've talked about this with fellow YouTubers and we're like, does she like, does she get paid per post? And I'm like, she must have to get paid for some of her posts because I mean, you know, her, there is value attached to each of her posts, especially those ones where it's like a ColourPop launch and she posts like it's live. Like there's gotta be some kind of monetary exchange there. Let me know if you guys know, cause I'm curious to hear. But basically she just revealed the Kylie Cosmetics Holiday 2019 collection. Um, Kylie's coming out with a bunch of stuff. So there's gonna be some lip kits, an eyeshadow palette, mini lip kits, red liquid eyeliner, two lipstick ornaments, high gloss collection, four piece brush collection, blush highlighter duo, illuminating face primer, illuminating setting spray, two shimmer eye glazers, and red and white packaging. All of this is gonna launch on November 19th at 3 p.m. online at Kylie Cosmetics. So I definitely bought a few things from Kylie when she first launched. I had a few of her eyeshadow palettes. I wasn't really a huge fan, so this is really great for me because I like, you guys know I love to buy makeup, and it's nice for me when I find brands that don't speak to me. So Kylie is definitely one of those brands for me where I could just look at this stuff and be like, eh, like doesn't affect me in any shape or form, which I love so much. And Honestly, the palette I think is definitely more Christmassy than some of the other stuff I've seen from her in past years. I think it's beautiful. I love like the red shades. This is a very wearable palette. If I was able to easily access this, I can see people like going to Ulta and seeing this and wanting to pick it up like totally. And then the two lipsticks are two beautiful, you know, holiday appropriate. There's a nude and a nice red, which I think is great. Not really into primers and stuff like that. The blush duo looks really beautiful. So overall, I think it's a well-rounded collection. Does this mean that I want to buy it? No. And then the liquid lipsticks, I'm not a huge fan of our formula. Not into buying individual eyeshadows, especially in pot form. I feel like it's a waste of money because I never end up using it. Um, the red liquid eyeliner is kind of a cool idea. We've definitely seen liquid liners from other brands so you definitely don't have to pay Kylie pricing on that and yeah I mean it's cool I don't want it but that's fine and then there's like the brushes and stuff like that so I think it's like a great gift idea for Kylie fans and yeah that's all I have to say about that so elf came out with a new collection this is a cannabis derived skincare line so there's a hydration cream a face oil a primer and a calm bomb for your lips I suppose and all of that is pretty affordable everything looks to be about under $12 I'm not really like crazy for elf skincare I definitely purchased a bunch of elf skincare a while ago and I just it's not that I don't think it's good it's just that I didn't really think it was good and then the thing about affordable makeup and skincare is yeah it's like 10 bucks but when you buy 
like 10 times 10, you've still spent like $100. That's what I find myself doing a lot of the time with brands like e.l.f. I'll add a few things to my cart and then lo and behold, I'm like $80 deep and I'm like, I don't even like any of the skincare. So I definitely don't dabble. I have the products I like and I'll try things every once in a while, but I'm good right now for skincare. I definitely want to try more like 4-3 a stuff, but even that I'm like, okay, Karen, like you need to use up more things before you buy some more. So I'm doing good. Um, so another big collection that launched and I am anti-hauling is the uh, ColourPop and Frozen collab. So this was announced I think last week sometime or I don't even know. This weekend I think actually is when it was announced. And they have two collections. There's the Elsa collection and the Anna collection. I don't have kids and I don't have like anyone around me that's like the age of Frozen. Thank God because I literally found that song to be the most like mind-numbing mind and irritating song on earth. So I definitely am not a fan of Frozen or the hype or anything like that. Um, keeping all those feelings aside, I don't think these palettes are bad palettes. I like the neutral one. I think it's beautiful. Um, I don't really enjoy that they priced it at $15 just because of the collab, but I get it. You know, there's a cost involved and they have to pay like royalties and stuff when they're using copyrighted material so I get that um, but yeah mm, I mean they're cute palettes is this revolutionary stuff for Colourpop no but I totally get that they're capitalizing on the new movie coming out um, and they're also you know the holiday season this is like the perfect gift for so many kinds of people and when I post about new releases on my community tab you guys all said that a lot of your like nieces and daughters and so many people were interested in buying this as a gift so I hope you guys were able to grab it I'm assuming it sold out pretty quickly because of the hype so yeah let me know if you guys had fun picking those up so probably the most controversial thing I'll talk about tonight is the Jaclyn Hill cosmetics holiday 2019 launch she's coming out with a bunch of stuff there's gonna be three different formulas so she's got like um a powder palette so like a highlighting palette those are 49 dollars, basically 50 bucks two of those there's a light and a like a deeper complexion palette then there's uh these loose highlighters there's five shades 24 dollars, and then she's doing like a cream to powder or powder to cream highlighting formula and those are Oh, those are $24 and then she's doing a luminous powder that's $32 so everything's priced pretty much on like the higher end of things and then three brushes all over $20 a brush so definitely not cheap by any means and this one is interesting because so many people have so many different opinions and so many different sides of the coin so basically it's like Okay, it's just makeup, it's not that deep, it's just a powder you put on your face. I totally, you know, most of the time, that's where I stand with anything, you know, where people are having hype and canceling things, and I'm just like, it's just makeup, it's fine. The only thing that, I don't know, it's weird because, like, I watched her video and... I was definitely one of those people that was like, oh, you know, she really seems like she's learned her lesson and she really seems like she's changed and like when she said like how she felt embarrassed or like this was like a huge thing for her and all of that stuff, like it really does like pull at your heartstrings and I'm like not really like a super emotional person and obviously I don't know Jaclyn Hill so like it's not hard for me to be unbiased but you do kind of like feel something you know in there and I used to be a pretty big Jaclyn Hill stan like I shared the other day I was going through my Instagram like I went all the way back to 2014 when I first got Instagram or whatever and I had shared like when she did her Becca launch there was a picture of her and John and she was in this like shimmery gold dress and I was like oh my gosh she has like three million plus subscribers on YouTube and she's so humble and sweet and like I was drinking like all the Jaclyn Hill Kool-Aid okay so I've been in all kinds of places and I bought the Morphe Volt 
even though I thought it was the dumbest thing ever because I love Jaclyn Hill so much. And after that, I definitely lost my trust in her. So I didn't even want to buy the lipsticks like at all. But I get it. Like I, I can see it from everyone's perspective. I don't know. I feel like as a community, like I feel like she should have given it more time. Like I don't think there's enough time that has gone by from the whole lipstick incident and I don't think she spent enough time kind of like explaining herself. I think that if she gave herself maybe like a full year to kind of just like not promote anything, maybe actually redo the lipstick launch, like I don't know what the status of all of that is. Like is she gonna do lipsticks again? Like I don't know. So I could definitely see from the video that there was definitely some kind of like thought put into it like everything she said you could tell she had kind of been maybe coached a little bit because she definitely like appealed to people she said a few times in the video like I'm doing this for you guys you know the people that have been following me since day one and I'm like the people that have been following you since day one are have Becca champagne pop like they're gonna be okay like this highlighter thing like you're not curing like cancer here you're not bringing like water to the drought stricken country of wherever you know what I mean so it's very interesting there's a lot of like words that people use to kind of like um, evoke emotions in the viewers and like I'm not like this big marketing expert but you can definitely see that it's all very calculated and you don't want to think that marketing is this big game but realistically there's so many companies out there that specialize in things like this there's PR firms that their whole job is crisis management and most consumers don't run into stuff like that but I wouldn't be surprised if there is a PR team that's coaching her behind the scenes of how to say things how to appear in public, like how to appeal to people, like there's trigger words. There's so many things that nuances that we don't see behind the scenes. Like in my job, in my industry, I went to a trade show once and I took a class on crisis management and how to kind of like face the media if you do something or something happens where your company is in trouble. Does that make sense? So like, say for example, you know, things like BP oil spills or the like the Jacqueline Hill thing. So there are people that are experts that tell you like, how do you handle the media? How do you handle your Instagram? How do you handle your subscribers? So like, don't be fooled that this is like her one person show that's like, oh my God, poor me and my, you know, team of nine people like no she's like an enterprise she's a company she's not one person there's many people behind her brand so that you know that part I'm like very suspicious of it's like I know like I'm being lied to in a sense like it wasn't like a oh this was my mistake like this was a fuck up of a lot of people it wasn't just Jaclyn Hill like not testing out all her lipsticks not just being there it's a it's a big deal like if I mean, think of where you work and if something like this were to happen, it's not just the CEO's fault. Like, there were many, many people involved. So, it, it's just interesting because I, ju I just feel like I could tell that she was definitely, like, coached on what to say. So, that really, like, I don't know. It hits a nerve and, like, again, I definitely, like, support and buy from many, many problematic brands. So... I get it, but it's like also like if somebody tricked me and I was like unhappy about it, I'm not going to continue to perpetuate the cycle by giving them my money. So hopefully that makes sense, but I just wanted to give you guys like my perspective from like just the life experiences I've had in like marketing and then just like knowing the back end of like how public relations work so I'm sure that most of you probably know even more than me so I would love to hear all of your opinions down in my comments but that's pretty much all I have to say about that it does launch on November 26th so I think is that Thanksgiving it's the day before Thanksgiving I don't know so do with it what you will but it's definitely very suspicious in my personal opinion. So it looks like House Labs is coming out with a holiday collection. Again, this is something I can easily anti-haul. Not really into Lady Gaga. I know a lot of people love her. I, I mean, I think her music is okay, but I don't stand Lady Gaga, if that makes sense. And 
Um, I haven't really heard a lot about her brand. I know people were really excited or annoyed. Like there were two kinds of people, like really annoyed people that it ended up being on Amazon because everyone sees Lady Gaga as being such a rebel and they're like, what the heck are you doing collabing with Amazon, which Amazon's like trying to take over the world. So that's a whole nother, <laughs> another drama for another day. Um, but yeah, I just haven't heard good things about her brand and I don't feel any like reason to buy any of this and this will all launch on November 18th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Amazon, of course, which is, you know, great, I guess. So M Cosmetics is coming out with some new stuff. Um, they have a new collection launching called the Magic Hour Collection, inspired in that time of the day where the sky goes from pink, orange to gold. Um, I honestly feel like M Cosmetics is kind of like the brand, like, it's kind of like a brand like Glossier. It's very, like, no makeup makeup vibes, and that's really not my vibes. So when I look at this, it's just like, that eyeshadow palette looks like dust. Like, <laughs> it looks like dust. Like, I, I don't know what else to say. So I'm definitely passing on that, but if you're interested, it does launch November 17th at 9 p.m. Is that a typo? trend mode 9 p.m pacific standard time they do kind of do like weird launch times though so you might have to keep an eye on that um okay so another really cool um launch that's coming up kkw and makeup by mario are doing round two so it's called like the muse and the artist collection or something like that and Although this palette isn't like the most revolutionary palette we've ever seen, it kind of gives me like subculture vibes to be honest. Let me know if you guys think that it's giving you subculture vibes as well. Because like the greens and the mustards are very subculture-y in my opinion. I like the tones. I think this is like a great like everyday kind of palette. But then that green is like a fun pop of color. So if you want to, you know, get a little crazy, that might be fun. This will launch November 22nd, noon Pacific Standard Time on KKW Beauty. So I want it, but I don't want it bad enough to buy it on the day of launch, if that makes sense. I usually like to pick up KKW when it's on sale, or at least I can get free shipping. If I can't get any of those things, I don't typically tend to buy it. I think this will sell out, to be honest, so it's hard to say, but right now I think I'm just going to admire it from a distance because I have so many eyeshadow palettes that I'm still working on and I did just buy the Pat McGrath palette that launched today, the Divine Rose palette. So definitely subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I will do a look or something with it just to show it on my channel, obviously. Very excited about that. So ColourPop did launch another collection at the start of this week. It was the Coconut Collection and they had a Going Coconuts eyeshadow palette, Call Me On My Shell Phone um, trio of the Super Shocks, Creme de Coco Creme Gel Liner Bundle, Coco Loco Lip Bundle, Shall We Dance Tint Duo, uh, Coconut Kiss Duo, and then Talk To The Palm Bronzer and Coconut Beach Bronzer. So this collection is really a nice collection, I think, for the neutral lovers out there. I honestly think this palette is really pretty. I low-key have been like throwing it in my cart and closing the browser like a hundred times over, but I refuse to like do it. I'm like, Karen, you don't need every ColourPop palette, like stop it. I already have their neutral palette, the brown sugar, so I'm like, mm, let me just, let me just play with the one I have and be happy with myself. I do have an idea where I want to do neutral palette recommendations for different price points because I do get that question every once in a while on like what's my favorite neutral palette and I definitely have an answer for you so let me know in the comments if you would like to see what my favorite neutral palettes are. I will break it down by price point and kind of tell you guys about them so let me know if you're interested in that. I don't like the just a tint formula to be honest so that's an easy pass and then the other day I was looking at the bronzers because I was like "Ooh, let me get that deep shade and then I decided to pull out all my ColourPop blushes and um like face face products that I have so I put them all in this giant colored rain palette so as you can see I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I have 13 ColourPop pressed face products so do you guys think I need another bronzer uh no I don't I absolutely do not no I won't be buying the bronzers either so I really just want the eyeshadow palette and I want to try their 
scrub and the lip balm, but like I said, I don't need it, so I'm not gonna buy it for now. No, I'm gonna anti-haul it, I don't need it. The end, full stop, no buying it. Okay, so the next thing, everyone freaked out because they, um, this company, this is a British brand, I believe, because I did go on their website because I was curious, Call La, Ro La Roque, I think is how it's pronounced. Sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, and everyone thought it was Lorac, including myself when I first, when Trend Moon sneak peeked it like a month or so ago. Everyone thought it was Lorac, and I'm like, what the shit is this? Like, Lorac all of a sudden comes out with this like giant rainbow palette. Like, it makes no sense. But it's not Lorac, it's La Roque. And it was so funny because I saw so many other YouTubers say like, oh, so different for Lorac. And no, it's not. <laughs> it's not Lorac. Um, some of their palettes looked very much like the Profusion palettes that you see on like Target and stuff. So I don't know that these are necessarily like the best quality, but I've never used them. So if you used La Roque, let us know in the comments. I'm curious to know about it, but I don't need a rainbow palette at all. Like zero rainbow palettes required. So I'm definitely passing on that. So would you guys believe that I filmed the first half of this video and then I went to a hockey game and it is now 10 14 at night and I was like listen y'all I want to finish filming this video so I'm gonna go back in my makeup room and film a video so I got about I didn't I don't even think I made it halfway through so here we are so the next product I want to talk about is this new palette by shop peachy queen and this is their like friends themed palette. I don't know like what the copyright policy on this is because technically I don't think it says that it's like the friends palette anywhere. It's just like heavily inspired looking and I think the names are like names from the show. I don't really know like I watch friends growing up but I don't like I'm not a friend stan. You know some people are friend stan so it's $29.99 and it just looks like a rainbow palette. Honestly, I saw a lot of people were eyeing this. Um, it reminds me a lot of the BH Cosmetics Festival palette that I have from last year, so I'm okay to pass on that. Okay, the next launch is LC Cosmetics is coming out with lip products. They're coming out with lipsticks, $24 a lipstick. That's kind of pricey for a lipstick. And... Matching lip liners for $20. So I tried Elsie a long time ago, and honestly, I wasn't very impressed. So I haven't really been drawn to trying anything else from them. That's definitely on my anti-haul list. And then Cheetos, there's like a Cheetos Riley Rose collaboration happening. And Trend Mood posted this makeup. It was interesting though, because I was watching Jeffree Star's Instagram stories, and he's coming out with a review of the palette and stuff and he said there was like something shady going on with it so it'll be very interesting because I think he's gonna like expose Forever 21 or some nonsense so who who knows I don't know okay so Ofra launched their holiday mini liquid lipsticks in full sizes and I recently tried the Ofra liquid lipstick formula I'm actually wearing an Ofra shade today this is Las Olas from the Samantha March collab with Ofra and I really like their liquid lipsticks. I'm eyeing this one shade. It's that like dark brown color called Sedona. That is a Karen Harris color if ever one was in existence. So I really want to buy it, but I'm okay without just like going out and buying it right now. I have so many lip products. You guys will see I have a lipstick declutter that I filmed, but I'm low-key saving it for Vlogmas. Is that what it's called? I don't know. It's what what do you call it when YouTubers upload every day in December. I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna do that. So I'm saving my declutters for December time. I'm trying to do some pre-filming because I don't have a schedule where I can film every day. So I'm trying to like stock up on videos. So just know that a lip declutter is coming. So this is really exciting. Lethal Cosmetics is coming out with a Dream Sign palette. Includes six, six mattes and three sparkly metallics. And the nine a nine pan palette. Previously, they only had like the was it twelve or sixteen pan palettes, and there was no like dividers in between the shades, so it was more like a Z palette. 
So this is really interesting. I also saw they're coming out with like lipsticks and I think they're doing highlighters as well. And all of this is coming on Black Friday, I believe. I am actually gonna do a separate video of Black Friday shopping and just giving you guys like tips and tricks and stuff like that. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see that. I think that's gonna be a really fun video. Hopefully I can make it like a little unique for you guys and so that should be really fun. Okay, next thing I low-key want is one of these Soul Body Body Highlighters. They just look so like wet and I just want to try one. I just want to see if they are as glowy as they look in the like promo pictures. And it's like a really big compact. It definitely reminds me of like the Marc Jacobs compacts because I saw Samantha March show them in her Instagram story. So I'm really, really curious. Would love to know if you guys have tried them and if they're like worth the hype kind of, you know. Um, and then Fenty Beauty did launch their Ruby Riches shade. This is a metallic brick red kilowatt highlighter. So I bought Trophy Wife when it first launched and I bought the Sangria Split Pan Palettes when that came out and I thought it was just okay. I don't love the Fenty Highlighter formula. It's very glittery. Usually whatever I put here ends up all over my face. So I tend to avoid it. I did see a few of my friends bought it and a lot of people have like said they would like to try it and I think I'll probably see it in person when I go to my local Sephora but that doesn't ever really happen and it did launch during the sale so I was tempted but honestly I think that I'm not gonna do like a no buy next year by any means or a low buy but I think I'm gonna give myself some rules on like highlighters and blushes and like bronzers and stuff like that like I just want to focus on like eyeshadow palettes because that's where like my I goes like I love eyeshadow palettes so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try and figure something out but we'll see I'm open to your input so Laura Lee Los Angeles launched her holiday collection it's a glazed and bronzed collection and there's a lipstick trio and then bronzed and highlighting palettes for $19 each and lipsticks are $18 each that's so bizarre what kind of price point is that like you can get a lipstick for 18 or you can pay a dollar more and get a whole highlighter palette. I don't know. These promo pictures are pretty bad though. They're like taken in the dark so they just don't look very good. Uh, definitely not interested in picking that up myself but I'm sure the Laura Lee stands of the world are very excited. Colourpop did come out with yet another collection. Um, between my Will I Buy It cycles they launched a collab with Pony and her company called Biddy, I guess, and honestly, this is a fun collection, but I see those pressed glitters, and that's like the most interesting. When the most interesting thing in your palette is pressed glitter, it's not for me, sis. Like, I'm good. Um, there are some Super Shock highlighters as well as blushes, which are fun, but honestly, I'm looking at the swatches on tan skin, and they just look so ashy to me. Like, I'm not very impressed, but I get it because she is a lighter skin person, so it makes sense that the makeup is designed for somebody with a lighter skin tone. You know the other, like, low-key, kind of weird thing I noticed all of a sudden? Because I'm, I'm so curious to see, like, the coconut collection on tan skin or like brown skin or even like a person of like a black person I would love to see swatches and or like a YouTube video with like a tutorial or like somebody that gets it in PR and I swear to gosh I don't know anyone that is on the ColourPop PR list that's a person of color like just off the top of my head I can't think of anyone like realistically also I don't really know a lot of YouTubers that are People of color, to be very honest, I feel like a majority of the people I watch are not deeper or tan skin tones. Um, I do watch some, but not a lot. But I would be so curious if you guys knew of any YouTubers that are people of color that get ColourPop PR. Because I feel like it's really lacking. Like, I even did a PR, like, I did a ColourPop PR search on YouTube and... 
I scrolled pretty far down and there were some hauls, but I didn't see anyone that was getting PR that was like my skin tone or darker. Um, so that was kind of disappointing because I've watched so many people that are lighter skin tones that are getting put on the ColourPop PR list or receive PR here and there, but I don't know, that kind of like really, really stood out to me because I only re recently noticed it. So I'm just wondering if like I just don't know, which is 100% possible, or like if you guys know people that are, you know, of different skin tones and different ethnicities, I'd be really curious to know who is on the ColourPop PR list other than like really light skin tones. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh. Don't come for me for saying that. It's just an observation, okay? So I did buy this palette. Oh my gosh. It's so funny because there's definitely like mixed reviews. Like I think it's so easy to see this palette and say like, oh, it's Morphe. It's ugly. Blah, 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 blah. But honestly, like I thought it was a beautiful palette. Like, I don't necessarily agree with the company or the price point, but I don't think it's like the ugliest palette alive by any means. Um, I've seen people buy, like I showed in my video, the 39A, like, and the James Charles. Like, don't tell me this palette is worse than those two palettes, okay? If you have those two palettes, like, don't act like you're above by Morphe. <laughs> I'm so gonna get canceled for saying that. Like, I just don't get it. It's like, it's fine. Like, I feel like if you genuinely feel like it's an ugly palette, that's fine. But, like, if you if you think it's not ugly, that's it's okay to say it's not ugly either. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to just, like, say it to score cool points. But I honestly think it's a great palette. Especially if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you get so much variety in this palette because there's those hot red tones that I used in my eyes. There's that whole row of highlighters, which like you would never need to buy another highlighter ever again. The black is really pigmented. There's a section for neutrals. If you ever feel like playing with color, you can do that. So I think it's a cool palette. Oh, and then the other thing too, when I was making, I don't know if you guys have seen, I did a video this week called my makeup wish list, and I was filling in my description box because I was trying to link all the products. Products, and I went to link the P. Louise base in snow the white base and it's been sold out and it was sold out in their store too when I was in the cities and so I went to link it and I noticed that it was in stock so of course like my knee-jerk reaction is like oh my gosh order snow like you've been wanting snow and I wanted to use afterpay so then I checked um, the lipstick set that was available for their holiday collection because I saw it in store and I wanted to buy it, but then I was like, nah, um, because I already have all those shades in full sizes, but those are like my favorite nudes are in that set. So I did grab that because I want to try the Morphe glosses and I thought it would be a fun way to try them. Also, like I could just keep the other liquid lipstick shades in my purse because I do like having them. And yeah, I just like, I love the Morphe liquid lipsticks. I've been wearing this shade all week. This is Peanut by Morphe. So I really like their liquid lipsticks, honestly. And it was nice to see the store because I could swatch a lot of stuff and try out a lot of stuff. I even bought some like little detail brushes. I picked up this brush from the Morphe store for Inner Corner Highlight, the M149. Such a great brush. So I really had fun at the Morphe store and swatching their stuff because I think they have like improved the quality. No tea, no shade. Like if something's good, I'm not gonna just tell you it's bad just because I don't think the brand is the greatest, you know what I mean? Okay, so um, Charlotte Tilbury came out with this super boring looking eyeshadow palette. I honestly thought they relaunched the palette from the Nordstrom sale. I didn't even realize it was a different palette until I saw people um, showing the Nordstrom palette versus this one. Um, this is an easy eye palette and it's $52, like or $57, that's really expensive. Like, that's really expensive for what this is. It looks like the Naked Basics palette. You can buy like 100 ColourPop palettes for that price, so do not buy that palette, oh my gosh. Kathleen Lights' new nail polish line launch. I'm actually wearing two of the shades today. This is 11, and then I have a, top, a coat of Girl Power on. When I tell you that 11 was the creamiest nail polish I've ever used, I I mean I I just can't explain it. It went on like butter. Like it was so creamy and it dried fast. I've had these nails on for a few days now and that's what I really like about her nail polish. It doesn't chip. 
um it doesn't yeah it's just great like it's honestly really really good and I'm so excited because I think she's coming out with a holiday collection too so very very excited to try new things from um, Lights Lacquer. So Colourpop launched a new Hyaluronic Acid Creamy Concealer and I did actually pick it up. I did film a video with like first impressions on this concealer. It's actually the concealer I have on under my eyes today. Is this the most full coverage concealer I own? Definitely not. But it's a nice concealer. Like it's okay. It's definitely not something I would like recommend and beg and plead that you go get. But it's not the worst concealer. It's not very drying or anything like that. So I would say it's okay. That's my current recommendation on that. Here's something else I would anti-haul. It is the new Ofra Soul Palette. I honestly feel sad for Ofra because I know there's so many YouTubers that love Ofra. But I don't really understand why other than the liquid lipsticks and the highlighters. Like palettes like this. I feel like I don't understand. Like... First of all, I get that there's all these like products and blushes and setting powders and eyebrow powders and stuff like that, but the price point is ridiculous. Like $79, like how are you going to sell that? And I remember when they first came out with stuff like this, they had a bigger discount. Like influencers had like 40% off, which like made the price a little bit more bearable, but now I think most of the influencers only have 20% off. And I'm like, I don't want that for 20% off. And I don't know who's paying full price for these, but I just think it's so odd that they do this type of palette. I feel like it's so old school makeup and I just wish they would just make eyeshadow palettes and make highlighters and just do everything separate. And I mean, it's okay if they offer an option like this because ColourPop does like build your own palettes, but like who is this for? Like I, I don't understand. Like. And who needs that much highlighter in any situation? Like, I don't know. It just seems really odd. And I feel like somebody should tell them. <laughs> like, I don't know. Somebody somebody should really, like, be like, listen, Ofra, like, you're all about, like, supporting small influencers and this and that and the other. But can you make a more cohesive palette? Because it's giving me anxiety looking at it. This is the Physician's Formula Gold Vault 24 Karat Gold Collagen Face Palette. Uh, so I'm assuming these are all highlighters if it's a face palette? No, it's probably a face and eye palette. That would make sense. So this is interesting. It kind of looks like what the Urban Decay Honey Palette looks like. So if you didn't want to buy the Urban Decay Honey Palette but that appealed to you, maybe you will like this. But it's all like satin shades and I just don't understand. Like this is one of those things that could have been like a quad or like a quint or like a duo and we would have been good to go. But no, they had to make it a whole palette. Like really drug it on there. So Lisa Eldridge came out with some new lipsticks. Again, guys, I'm so not into lipsticks. Like, I'm not into bullet lipsticks. So I don't care if you point at it and tell me, like, it's the best liquid lipstick you've ever... I don't care if you point at it and tell me it's, like, the best lipstick you've ever seen, ever touched, ever smelled. Whatever it is, I don't care. Because for me, I love liquid lipsticks. And then the only lipsticks, like, traditional lipstick bullet type product I would ever probably repurchase are those Pat McGrath bombs. Like... I have some here. These are so good for the winter time. Like my lips are so chapped and I like I almost wanted to buy myself a backup of that during the Sephora sale because they're like 30 or 40 dollars like ridiculous price but I held off and try to be good but yeah I really wish that I liked traditional lipsticks but I don't so it's very easy for me to pass on them. So now I'm going to switch over to some indie stuff. I did see JD Glow did post that they are coming out with some new color velvet lipsticks, liquid lipsticks. I, again, like I mentioned, have so many liquid lipsticks. I'm really not trying to pick up any right now. I just don't need anything as far as that category of product. And it does look like they are coming out with maybe some new shades and things like that. I do have a ton of JD Glow shadows. I'm actually wearing a JD Glow shadow in my inner corner right now, and I love them so, so much. Um, but right now, I don't need anything, so I will be passing on those, but it is really cool that they are coming out with more things. 
Okay, the other thing I did see is the Balm is coming out with some new products. These are pocket-sized palettes. There's a total package um, for, I don't know, there's just two different kinds. Looks like there's, oh, they look like they're the size of these blushes I have from them. That would totally make sense because there's like two layers. Maybe it's a little bit bigger because that would be really small. I'm actually wearing this on my face today, which is cool, but... Yeah, I'm just going to throw up a picture. I definitely don't want this, but it's called the Total Package Full Face Palette that comes complete with shadows, blush, bronzer, highlight, and a lip shade. Ooh, I don't know about lip shades in, in palettes. Like, that freaks me out so, so much. Okay, so Bailey Syrian is coming out with a collab. This is really cool. She is doing a nail polish collab with a brand called... What is it? I think they're called Loud or something. What do they call it? Loud Lacquer. And she's coming out with like four shades. And it's really cool. I'm so happy for her. I did get to meet her when I was in New York. And she's like really sweet, down to earth. And she like liked my like post when I posted about her collab and stuff like that. I think that's really cool. And obviously she doesn't know who I am and doesn't do her any good liking my messages. So it's it's really cool that she's just like down to earth like that. And then Colored Rain is working on a foundation, which is really cool. I just saw this video of them applying the foundation over a tattoo, and you can't even see a tattoo anymore. So it looks like it's going to be a little bit dewy, but looks full coverage. So that is very exciting. Excited to see the shade range. And then Nabla did post their new palette. It is called... What is this palette even called? It is the Mystic Palette, and it is 12 luxurious shades of uh, the new Dreamy Tomb, the Mystic Palette. I don't know what they're trying to say. Very complicated. So it'll be launching on the 21st at Nabla and November 28th at Authorized Retailers, which I think means that it's going to be at like Ulta and Morphe and stuff like that, which is great. I think it's a beautiful palette. It definitely gives me vibes like the Pat McGrath Midnight Sun Palette. Because those purples and the browns definitely remind me of Midnight Sun. And so therefore I don't need it. But I will admire it. And I think Angie will probably get it in PR. So I can um, oogle from a distance. Which I'm okay with doing. And then Pat McGrath did launch the, um, the Mothership 7. I think is what it is now. Um, the Divine Rose. It was a Selfridges exclusive. But it did launch on... Pat McGrath's website today and you best believe I was in line ready to go and so I should have that next week sometime fingers crossed hopefully her shipping works I don't know I only saw one shipping option it was free and I picked it and we'll just wait and it is what it is the last product I want to mention is an indie brand and you guys might know this brand because Jordan or Jordan and Sharon from the ColourPop team from back in the day kind of um, did start their own line and it's called Insert Name Here and it's actually a line of synthetic hair that they do. So they have like wigs, bangs, buns, like they have faux ponytails. Like I really enjoyed following this brand because you can tell like that who runs it because of their vibe. And they just launched six ponytail shades. Oh my gosh, there's like a periwinkle, a baby blue, a bubblegum pink, a lavender, a red, and a gray. And I'm like, can I get one of each, please? Like, the only one I'm like, I don't really need that is the gray one. But all the other colorful ones I think would be so fun to just like have. I don't know what I would do with any of these things. But they just look so fun and like unicorn and princess. And I just love it so much. So that is everything I wanted to talk to you guys about in today's Will I Buy It? I am going to have so much fun editing this video as per usual. It's probably a hundred hours long, but I just want to say thank you guys so, so much for watching. Just so you know, I'm so close to 4K. Like, I think I'm like 10 or 12 people away from 4K. So if you want to subscribe so I can hit 4K, that will be amazing. And honestly, it just kind of tells me you guys like what I'm doing. You know, it really helps me out. So subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop asking, but I do love you guys. Bye.